Welcome to a world where shadows come to life and every creak of the floor sends chills down your spine. Before we dive into tonight's tale, make sure to grab your headphones and find a cozy spot. The eerie whispers and unsettling sounds are best experienced up close, and listening through headphones will make every spine-tingling detail come alive. As darkness falls and you prepare for sleep, let our story wrap you in its chilling embrace. Are you ready to face your fears? Close your eyes, and let the terror begin. That night, I was home alone. It had been raining for hours, the kind of rain that just doesn't stop. Everything was quiet except for the sound of it hitting the windows. I spent most of the evening watching TV, trying to wind down after a long day. My husband was out of town for work, so it was just me in the house. Around midnight, I was getting ready to head to bed. I had just turned off the TV when the doorbell rang. It startled me because it was so late, and I wasn't expecting anyone. I paused for a moment, unsure of what to do. The doorbell rang again, and I decided to check. I grabbed my phone and walked cautiously to the front door. There was no peephole, just a window next to the door. I peeked out, but there was no one there. The porch light was on, illuminating the empty steps. I waited a few seconds, listening for any sounds, but all I could hear was the rain. I thought maybe it was kids playing a prank or something. I didn't want to think too much about it, so I turned off the porch light and headed back to the living room. As I walked back, I heard a faint sound coming from the backyard. It was hard to tell what it was with the rain, but it didn't seem right. My heart started pounding as I moved toward the kitchen, which had a big window overlooking the backyard. I hesitated before turning on the light, hoping I was just imagining things. When the light flickered on, I froze. There was someone standing near the back fence, just barely visible through the rain. I couldn't make out any details, just the outline of a figure. They weren't moving, just standing there, almost like they were waiting for something. My mind was racing, trying to figure out who it could be. I didn't have any neighbors who would be out at this hour, especially not in this weather. I quickly turned off the light and backed away from the window, hoping they hadn't seen me. My first thought was to call the police, but then I second-guessed myself. What if it was just someone passing by? Maybe they got lost or were taking a shortcut. But the way they were standing there, so still, made me uneasy. I grabbed my phone again and dialed my husband's number. He didn't pick up, probably asleep already. I sent him a quick text, letting him know what was going on, just in case. Then I went to the hallway and double-checked that all the doors were locked. They were, but I didn't feel any safer. I stood in the dark, listening to the rain, trying to calm myself down. I hoped that whoever it was would just leave, but a few minutes later, I heard another sound, this time closer. It was coming from the side of the house, near the garage. I slowly moved to the window in the living room that faced that side. I peeked out, barely breathing, and saw the figure again. They had moved from the backyard and were now standing just outside the garage door. I could see them more clearly now, a man in a dark jacket with his face partially obscured. He was facing the house, almost like he was trying to decide what to do next. Panic set in. I knew I couldn't stay in the house with him right outside. My mind was racing, trying to think of my options. I didn't have a weapon, nothing I could use to defend myself. The nearest police station was miles away, and with the rain, I wasn't sure how quickly they could get here. I considered running out the front door and making a break for it, but what if he saw me? What if there was more than one person? I felt trapped, my heart pounding in my chest so loudly that it drowned out the sound of the rain. I needed to get out but I had to be smart about it. I decided to go upstairs, 
hoping I could get a better view of what he was doing from one of the bedroom windows. As quietly as I could, I made my way up the stairs, every creak of the floorboards making me wince. When I got to the bedroom, I crouched low and peeked out the window. The man was still there, but now he was moving slowly, walking along the side of the house, heading toward the backyard again. He was close enough now that I could see his face a bit more. He wasn't someone I recognized, but there was something unsettling about the way he moved, like he was in no rush, like he knew I was watching and wanted to scare me. I pulled back from the window, my mind made up. I couldn't wait any longer. I grabbed my phone and keys and headed back downstairs, keeping an eye on where he was. He was near the back door now, looking at it like he was considering trying to get inside. I knew I had to act fast. I quietly unlocked the front door and slipped outside, the rain immediately soaking me to the bone. I didn't look back as I ran to my car, praying that the keys wouldn't slip from my wet hands. I got in, locked the doors, and started the engine. My hands were shaking so badly that I almost dropped the keys. As I drove away, I glanced in the rearview mirror. The man was standing in the middle of the street, watching me leave. His face was still shadowed, but I could tell he was smiling. That smile sent a chill down my spine that I'll never forget. I didn't stop driving until I was far from the house, somewhere I felt safe enough to pull over and call the police. They took my report and said they'd send someone to check the area, but I don't know if they ever found him. I didn't go back to the house that night, I couldn't. Even now, I can't stop thinking about how he was standing there, watching me, like he knew I was scared, like he enjoyed it. I'm just glad I got out when I did. I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't fear gripped my stomach, and I had to fight the urge to scream. I needed to get out of there, but my feet felt glued to the floor. The voices from the other room grew louder, and I realized there was more than one person. I couldn't understand what they were saying, but the tone was low and serious, like they were planning something. I didn't want to stick around to find out what. I backed away slowly, trying to be as quiet as possible, but every creak of the floorboard seemed to echo through the entire building. My mind raced as I tried to figure out how I had made such a stupid mistake. I just needed to get to the door and leave, but I couldn't stop staring at those photos. The fear on those faces looked so real, so desperate. I finally snapped out of it and turned toward the door. My hand shook as I reached for the knob, trying not to make any noise. I could hear footsteps now, getting closer, and the voices had stopped. Whoever was in the other room was coming, and I knew I didn't have much time. Just as I was about to pull the door open, the hallway light flickered on. I froze, my hand still on the doorknob. A tall figure stepped into view, blocking my exit. His eyes locked onto mine, and I saw a mix of surprise and something darker. He didn't say anything, just stared at me with a look that made my blood run cold. I was trapped, and I knew it. My mind raced trying to come up with an excuse, some way to explain why I was in his apartment, but I couldn't find the words. The silence was deafening, and I could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on me. Then, without warning, he lunged at me. I barely had time to react, throwing myself to the side as he reached for me. I stumbled, crashing into a side table and knocking over a lamp. The noise was loud, too loud, and I knew the others in the apartment would hear it. I scrambled to my feet, adrenaline pumping through my veins. I didn't look back, didn't stop to see if he was coming after me, I just ran. I threw open the door and sprinted down the hallway, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I could hear footsteps behind me, fast and heavy, but I didn't dare turn around. I burst through the stairwell door and practically flew down the steps, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst. 
I could still hear him behind me, but I didn't slow down. I didn't stop until I was out of the building, out into the rain-soaked streets. The cold air hit me like a slap in the face, but I kept running, not sure where I was going, just knowing I needed to get away. It wasn't until I was several blocks away that I finally dared to stop. I ducked into a dark alley, pressing myself against the wall as I tried to catch my breath. I waited there, listening for any sign of pursuit, but the only sound was the rain and my own ragged breathing. My mind was still reeling, trying to process what had just happened. I didn't know who those people were or what they were planning, but I knew I had narrowly escaped something terrible. When I finally made it back to my apartment, I locked the door behind me and sank to the floor, my body shaking with fear and exhaustion. I didn't sleep that night, too afraid that if I closed my eyes, I'd wake up back in that wrong apartment, with those photos, those voices, and that man with the dark eyes. It's been weeks now, and I still can't shake the memory of that night. Every time I come home, I double-check the door, making sure it's the right one. I haven't told anyone what happened. I don't even know how to explain it. The rain was coming down hard, the kind that makes you want to stay inside, but I was out of food and the store was open for a few more hours. I figured it would be quick, get in, get out. The store was nearly empty, just a few people wandering around with their carts. The fluorescent lights flickered a bit as I grabbed a cart and started down the produce aisle. It was quiet, just the hum of the coolers and the sound of the rain against the windows. I was picking out some apples when I noticed him, a man, maybe in his forties, standing at the end of the aisle. He wasn't looking at the produce or anything, just standing there, staring right at me. It felt off, but I tried to ignore it. I thought maybe he was just lost in thought. I moved on to the next aisle, grabbing some bread and cereal. When I looked up, he was there again, standing at the end of the aisle, watching me. This time, I felt a shiver run down my spine. It was the way he was staring, like he was studying me or something. I tried to shake it off, thinking maybe I was just being paranoid. It was late and the store was almost empty. Maybe he was just another night owl like me, wandering around. But as I kept shopping, it became clear he was following me. Every aisle I went down, he was there, always at the end, always watching. I started to feel uneasy, my heart beating faster. I told myself to just ignore him and he would go away, but he didn't. He just kept following, aisle after aisle. When I got to the dairy section, I pretended to be interested in the milk, hoping he would lose interest and go away. But when I glanced up, he was closer, halfway down the aisle, just standing there with his eyes fixed on me. It was like he wasn't even trying to hide it anymore. My hands were shaking a little as I grabbed the milk and tossed it into my cart. I decided I had enough and headed towards the checkout, hoping that would put some distance between us. But when I turned the corner, I saw him again, this time even closer. He wasn't pushing a cart or holding any groceries, he was just there, staring at me with that same intense look. I couldn't figure out what he wanted, but it was clear he was following me. I hurried to the self-checkout, scanning my items as fast as I could. My mind was racing, trying to figure out what to do. I didn't want to make a scene, but I couldn't just let him keep following me. I glanced around, hoping to see a security guard or something, but the store was almost empty, just me, the man, and a couple of other late-night shoppers who seemed oblivious. As I finished scanning my items, I felt a presence behind me. I turned my head slightly and saw him standing just a few feet away, closer than he had been all night. I could feel his eyes on me, burning into the back of my neck. I swiped my card and grabbed my bags, my hand shaking as I stuffed the receipt into my pocket. I didn't look back, just headed straight for the exit, 
my heart pounding in my chest. The rain was still pouring down as I stepped outside, the cold air hitting me like a slap. I hurried to my car, fumbling with my keys, trying not to look around, but I could feel him. I knew he was there, following me. My car was parked near the edge of the lot, and it felt like it was a mile away. I finally reached my car and yanked open the door, throwing my bags into the passenger seat. As I was about to get in, I heard footsteps behind me, slow and deliberate. I turned around, and there he was, standing just a few feet away, his face partially hidden by the hood of his jacket, the rain dripping off it. He didn't say anything, just stood there, staring at me with that same intense look. I froze, my heart hammering in my chest. For a moment, we just stood there, the rain pouring down around us. I didn't know what he wanted or what he was going to do, but I knew I had to get out of there. I jumped into my car, slamming the door shut and locking it. My hands were trembling as I jammed the key into the ignition. I started the car and backed out as fast as I could, my tires screeching on the wet pavement. I glanced in the rearview mirror, and he was still there, standing in the rain, watching me drive away. His face was almost expressionless, but his eyes were full of something I couldn't quite place, something that scared me to my core. I drove out of the parking lot, my heart still pounding, glancing in the mirror every few seconds, half expecting to see his face again. But the road was empty, just me in the rain. I didn't stop until I got home, my hands gripping the steering wheel so tight my knuckles were white. When I finally pulled into my driveway, I just sat there for a minute, trying to calm down, trying to make sense of what had just happened. I looked around, making sure I wasn't followed, but everything seemed quiet, normal. But I couldn't shake the feeling that he was still out there somewhere, still watching me. I grabbed my bags and hurried inside, locking the door behind me and checking all the windows. My heart was still racing, my mind replaying the night over and over. I couldn't figure out why he had followed me or what he wanted, but I knew I never wanted to see him again. I didn't sleep much that night, every sound making me jump, every shadow looking like him. Even now, I still get uneasy when I go out at night still find myself looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see him standing there, watching me. I don't know who he was or what he wanted, but I'm sure of one thing, I was right to be scared. Sometimes, I wonder if he's still out there, looking for someone else to follow, someone else to scare. And that thought is enough to keep me on edge, always watching, always waiting for the next time I see his face the apartment was quiet, almost too quiet, like the calm before a storm. I still don't know who sent the package or what they wanted, but I can't shake the feeling that this isn't over. It was one of those nights when the rain wouldn't let up, pouring down hard against the roof and windows, making the whole house feel damp. I couldn't sleep, so I lay there in bed, staring at the ceiling and listening to the storm. The clock on my nightstand showed it was just past 3 a.m. I was half awake, not really thinking about anything, when I heard it, a loud, frantic knocking at the front door. My heart jumped into my throat. I wasn't expecting anyone, and who in their right mind would be out in this weather at this hour? I sat up, trying to convince myself it was just the wind or maybe a branch hitting the door. But then it came again louder and more desperate this time. I hesitated, but curiosity got the better of me. I slipped out of bed and grabbed my phone just in case. I didn't turn on any lights, not wanting to let whoever was out there know I was awake. I crept down the hallway, my bare feet silent on the cold hardwood floor. When I got to the door, I hesitated again, my hand hovering over the doorknob. Instead of opening it, I leaned in to look through the peephole. The rain was coming down in sheets, making it hard to see anything clearly, but there was no one there. The porch was empty. 
My heart was still pounding, and I could feel the tension in my chest, but I tried to tell myself it was nothing. Maybe the sound had come from somewhere else, like a neighbor's house, and I had just imagined it was at my door. But just as I was about to turn away, the knocking started again, this time at the back door. The sound echoed through the house, sharp and insistent. My breath caught in my throat, and I felt a chill run down my spine. There was no way someone could have moved that fast from the front to the back without me hearing their footsteps, right? I didn't want to check, but I knew I had to. I slowly made my way through the kitchen toward the back door. I kept to the shadows, moving as quietly as I could. The rain was still pounding against the windows, making it hard to hear anything else. My hand was shaking as I reached for the doorknob, but before I looked out the window and the door, I froze. Something didn't feel right. The knocking had stopped, but I could feel something, like someone was there, just on the other side of the door, waiting. I stood there, trying to gather the courage to look out, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Suddenly, the knocking started again, even louder this time, like someone was pounding on the door with both fists. I jumped back, my heart racing. I felt trapped, like the walls were closing in on me. My first thought was to call the police, but what would I tell them? That someone was knocking on my doors in the middle of the night and then disappearing? I backed away from the door, not wanting to be anywhere near it. My mind was racing, trying to figure out what to do. Should I open the door? Should I stay quiet and hope they go away? I didn't know. I just knew I didn't want to be standing there in the dark with that knocking echoing in my ears. I decided to head back to the living room, where I could keep an eye on both doors from a distance. I grabbed the nearest thing I could find, a heavy lamp, and held it tight in my hand, ready to use it if I had to. I stood there waiting, listening, every muscle in my body tense. The knocking stopped again, and for a moment there was nothing but the sound of the rain. I strained my ears, trying to hear anything out of the ordinary, but all I could hear was my own breathing, heavy and uneven. I kept glancing at the windows, half expecting to see someone staring back at me from the darkness, but there was nothing. Then, without warning, the knocking started again, but this time it was coming from the side of the house. It was as if someone was going around, trying every door, every window, trying to find a way in. I couldn't breathe, my mind racing with fear. I felt trapped, not knowing what they would try next or what they wanted. I backed up against the wall, holding the lamp like a weapon, trying to stay calm, trying to think of what to do. But all I could think about was the sound of that knocking, moving around the house, getting closer and closer. It felt like a game of cat and mouse, and I was the prey. The knocking moved again, this time to a window in the living room. I nearly dropped the lamp, my hands were shaking so badly. I didn't dare move, didn't dare make a sound. I just stood there, staring at the window, waiting for something to happen. But after a few minutes, the knocking stopped completely. The silence was almost worse. My ears were ringing from the tension, and I could barely hear over the pounding of my own heart. I stood there for what felt like hours, waiting for the next knock, but it never came. Finally, I mustered up the courage to move. I crept toward the window, keeping low, and peeked out from the corner. The rain was still coming down hard, making it difficult to see, but there was no one there. The yard was empty the street beyond it deserted. I wanted to believe it was over, that whoever it was had finally left, but I couldn't shake the feeling that they were still out there, watching. I stayed up the rest of the night, too scared to sleep, too scared to let my guard down. Every little noise made me jump, and I kept expecting the knocking to start again, but it didn't. The rain eventually let up, and the sky started to lighten, but I still couldn't relax. When morning finally came, 
I checked every door and window, but there was no sign of anyone, no muddy footprints, no damage, nothing to show that someone had been there at all. But I knew what I had heard. I knew it wasn't my imagination. I spent the day trying to go about my routine, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still wrong. Every time I heard a noise outside, I froze, half expecting to hear the knocking again. I felt like I was being watched, like whoever had been there last night hadn't gone far. As night fell again, I couldn't bring myself to turn off the lights or go to bed. I stayed in the living room, the lamp still in my hand, waiting. I didn't know what I was waiting for, but I knew I couldn't let my guard down, not until I knew for sure it was over. But deep down, I wasn't sure it would ever be over. That knocking, that feeling of being watched, it was burned into my mind. I didn't know who it was or why they had chosen my house, but I knew I would never forget that night, and I knew I would never feel safe in my own home again. I was driving through Arizona late at night, and the rain was coming down hard, making it difficult to see the road. I had been on the road for hours, and my eyes were burning from the strain. I just wanted to find a place to rest, somewhere cheap where I could crash for the night. That's when I saw the sign for the motel. It wasn't much to look at, a flickering neon sign and a few rundown rooms lined up in a row, but it was better than nothing. I pulled in, the tires splashing water as I parked. The place looked deserted, not a single car in the lot besides mine. The office was dimly lit, and when I went inside, an old man was sitting behind the desk, watching an ancient TV set with terrible reception. He barely looked at me when I asked for a room, just handed me a key and mumbled something about checkout being at 10 a.m. I took the key, walked back out into the rain, and found my room, number 7, right in the middle of the row. The door creaked when I pushed it open, and the room inside wasn't any more inviting than the outside. The bedspread was old and worn, the carpet stained, and the whole place smelled like mildew but I was too tired to care. I dropped my bag on the floor, kicked off my shoes, and collapsed onto the bed. It was then, as I was lying there staring at the water-stained ceiling, that I heard it, a faint noise coming from the room next door. At first, I thought it was just the wind or the rain hitting the side of the building, but then I heard it again, a low, muffled sound, like someone was talking or maybe arguing. The walls were thin, and I could just make out the tone, but not the words. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was none of my business, but the more I listened, the more I could hear. It wasn't just one person, there were multiple voices, all talking at once, too low for me to understand what they were saying. I sat up in bed, straining to listen, my heart starting to beat a little faster. The noise went on for a few minutes, then stopped abruptly. The sudden silence made the room feel even more oppressive. I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I got up and moved closer to the wall, pressing my ear against it, trying to hear more. But there was nothing, just silence. I waited for a while, but the voices didn't come back. I tried to tell myself it was just my imagination or maybe some kind of weird acoustics in the building, but I couldn't shake the unease settling in my stomach. I went back to bed, pulling the covers up to my chin, but I couldn't sleep. I kept staring at the wall, half expecting to hear the voices again. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I got up, grabbed the key, and left the room. I stood outside in the rain for a moment, trying to decide what to do. The other rooms looked just as run down as mine, the doors all closed and dark. I was just about to head back inside when I saw a light on in the room next to mine. The curtains were drawn, but a faint glow was coming from inside. I walked over, my shoes squelching in the mud, and stood in front of the door. I hesitated wondering if I should knock or just go back to my room, but something compelled me to raise my hand and knock. 
At first, there was no response. I knocked again, louder this time, and that's when I heard it, a shuffling sound, like someone moving around inside. I leaned closer to the door, trying to listen, but all I could hear was my own breathing. Then, without warning, the door swung open. I jumped back, my heart nearly stopping, but there was no one there. The room was empty. I stood there in the rain, staring into the dark room, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. The light was still on, but the bed was untouched, the furniture covered in dust, like no one had been in there for years. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was in a nightmare, like any moment I would wake up in my own bed, safe at home. But I wasn't dreaming. This was real. I stepped inside, my shoes leaving wet footprints on the dirty carpet. The room was cold, colder than it should have been, and the air felt heavy, oppressive. I walked over to the bed, the only sound in the room the drip of water from my clothes hitting the floor. There was nothing unusual about the room, no signs of life, no personal belongings, nothing to indicate anyone had been there at all. I turned to leave, but something caught my eye. There, on the nightstand, was a small, old-fashioned tape recorder. It looked out of place in the otherwise barren room. I hesitated, then reached out and pressed the play button. At first, there was nothing but static, but then I heard it, the voices. They were the same voices I had heard through the wall, but now they were clear, distinct. I couldn't understand the language, but the tone was unmistakable, anger, fear, pain. The voices overlapped, growing louder and more frantic, until they were practically screaming. My hands were shaking, and I dropped the recorder, the tape stopping with a loud click. The silence that followed was deafening, and I backed out of the room, too scared to look around, too scared to think. I ran back to my room, locking the door behind me, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't sleep at all that night. I just sat there on the bed, staring at the wall, listening for the voices, but all I heard was the rain. The next morning, I checked out as fast as I could. The old man at the desk didn't say a word, just handed me my receipt and went back to his TV. I didn't ask him about the voices or the tape recorder. I just wanted to get as far away from that place as possible. To this day, I don't know what happened in that motel and I don't want to know. But every now and then, when it's late at night and the rain is coming down hard, I hear those voices again, and I wonder if they'll ever leave me alone the voice softened to almost a whisper. You did well, it said. Now, go to the window. Every part of me screamed to stay where I was, to hang up the phone and call the police. But deep down, I knew it wouldn't matter. Whoever this person was, they were in control. Reluctantly, I stood up, my feet dragging as I moved toward the window. The blinds were still drawn, the room bathed in the sickly yellow light from the street lamps outside. I hesitated for a moment before cracking the blinds open. There was nothing there, just a rain-soaked street, empty and silent. No movement, no sign of anyone watching me. A small flicker of relief washed over me, making me think that maybe this was all some sick joke and it was over. But then the voice came through the phone one last time, sending a cold chill down my spine. Don't worry, it said, almost kindly now, we'll be watching. The line went dead, leaving me staring out at the empty street, the phone still pressed to my ear. It felt like waking up from a nightmare, but the fear was still there, heavy and suffocating. I dropped the phone and backed away from the window, my mind spinning. I didn't know who they were or what they wanted, but I knew they weren't done with me. And I knew without a doubt that I would never feel safe in my own home again. I was at an old, run-down bus stop in the middle of nowhere, waiting for the last bus. The shelter was barely holding together, 
and the wind kept blowing the rain right at me. I was soaked, cold, and just wanted to get home. The street lights flickered above me, casting a dim, eerie light on the empty road. Everything around me felt off, like I shouldn't be there. I kept looking down the road, hoping to see the bus headlights cutting through the rain, but there was nothing, just the steady sound of water hitting the pavement and the occasional rustle of leaves in the wind. I checked my watch again, growing more anxious. It was getting late, and I hadn't seen another soul for at least half an hour. Then, out of the darkness, I saw a pair of headlights in the distance. They were moving slowly, too slowly, like the driver was looking for something or someone. The car passed by the bus stop, barely making any noise, and continued down the road. I thought nothing of it at first, just another car driving by. But then, after a few minutes, the headlights appeared again, coming back from the other direction. The car passed by me again, even slower this time. I couldn't see much through the rain and dim light, but I could feel eyes on me as it went by. My heart started beating faster. The car disappeared around the corner, and I was left standing there, the rain pounding on the roof of the shelter, the air feeling heavier by the second. I tried to shake it off, telling myself it was nothing, just someone lost or maybe waiting for someone. But a few minutes later, the car came back, creeping along the road like a predator. This time, it stopped right in front of the bus stop. The engine idled quietly, the headlights casting long shadows on the wet pavement. The driver's side window rolled down slowly, and I saw a man sitting inside. His face was half hidden in the darkness, but I could see enough to know he wasn't smiling. He looked at me for a moment, not saying anything. The silence hung in the air, thick and uncomfortable. I tried not to look directly at him, but it was hard to ignore. Finally, he spoke, his voice low and calm, almost too calm. Need a ride? He asked. I shook my head, mumbling something about waiting for the boss. I tried to keep my voice steady, but it came out shaky. The man didn't seem to care. He just kept staring at me, like he was sizing me up. You sure? It's not safe out here in the rain, he said, his voice still calm, but there was something in it that made my skin crawl. I told him again that I was fine, that the bus would be here soon. He didn't move. He just kept looking at me, his eyes never leaving mine. A few seconds passed, though it felt much longer, then he nodded slowly, as if he'd made a decision. The window rolled up, and the car started to move forward, but only a few feet. Then it stopped again. My heart sank. I didn't know what to do. The rain was falling harder now, the noise almost deafening, and my mind was racing. I thought about making a run for it, but where would I go? The road was empty, and there were no houses or stores nearby, just darkness and rain. The car stayed where it was, the engine still running, and I could feel my pulse pounding in my ears. Then, out of nowhere, the passenger door clicked open. The man didn't say anything this time. He didn't have to. The open door was invitation enough. I took a step back my shoes splashing in the puddles beneath me, my throat dry, and I could feel panic rising in my chest. He didn't try to coax me anymore, just waited, his face still mostly hidden in shadow. The open door seemed like a black hole, something I'd disappear into if I made the wrong move. I could hear the rain pounding on the roof of the car, the drops running down in steady streams. Everything felt unreal, like time had slowed down. I stood there, frozen, my mind racing with what I should do. The rain kept pouring down, soaking through my jacket, chilling me to the bone. I thought about my options, but none of them seemed good, run, wait for the bus, get in the car. I looked down the road, hoping to see the bus's headlights, but there was nothing, 
Just the endless rain and the dim glow of the streetlights reflecting off the wet pavement. I was alone, completely alone, with this man and his open car door. I didn't want to get in, every instinct told me not to, but what if the bus never came? What if this was my only way out of here? My thoughts kept spiraling, making it hard to think straight. I could feel my heart beating faster and faster, my breaths coming in shallow gasps. The man's patience seemed endless. He just waited, his face unreadable, his presence more menacing with each passing second. Finally, something snapped inside me. I turned and ran. I didn't care where I was going, I just knew I had to get away from him. The sound of my shoes slapping against the wet pavement echoed in the night, mixing with the relentless rain. I expected him to follow me, to drive after me, but he didn't. The car stayed where it was, and as I looked back over my shoulder, I saw the door slowly closing, the car's headlights flickering off, plunging the area into darkness. And then it was gone. I didn't stop running until I reached a main road, my breath ragged, my clothes soaked through. I found another bus stop, this one with people waiting, and I stayed close to them, never letting them out of my sight. The bus eventually came, and I got on, feeling a strange mix of relief and fear. I kept thinking about the man, about what might have happened if I had gotten in that car. It was a Friday night, and the rain hadn't stopped for hours. The streets outside were empty, just the occasional car passing by, its tires splashing through puddles. I was sitting at my desk, staring at my computer screen, trying to finish up the last of my work. Everyone else had left hours ago, but I needed to meet a deadline. The office was quiet except for the hum of the air conditioning and the constant tapping of rain against the windows. I glanced at the clock. It was already past midnight. The rain was coming down harder now, the sound of it hitting the glass louder, almost drowning out everything else. I rubbed my eyes and stood up, stretching my legs. The office felt too big, too empty. All the lights were off except for the ones near my desk. I could see the reflection of the empty cubicles in the glass walls that surrounded the floor. As I walked over to the break room to get a cup of coffee, something caught my eye, a shadow near the glass doors at the entrance. I stopped, squinting to see through the dim light and rain. At first, I thought it was just the security guard making his rounds. They usually checked the building at night, making sure everything was locked up. But as I got closer, I realized it wasn't him. The figure was tall standing perfectly still just outside the doors. I could barely make out any details through the rain-smeared glass, but I could tell they were facing the building, looking directly at me. My heart skipped a beat. I wasn't sure why, but something about it didn't feel right. I froze, trying to rationalize it. Maybe it was just someone seeking shelter from the rain, or maybe they were lost and needed directions. But deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. I moved closer to the door, my footsteps quiet on the carpet. The figure didn't move, just kept standing there, watching. When I was just a few feet away, I stopped. The rain had formed a thick sheet over the glass, distorting the view, but I could see enough. It wasn't just the figure's stillness that unnerved me, it was their posture, the way they seemed to be leaning slightly forward, as if pressing against the glass, trying to get a better look inside. My hand hovered over the door handle, but I didn't touch it. Instead, I reached for my phone, never taking my eyes off the figure. Just as I was about to dial the security desk, the figure moved. It was so sudden that I jumped. They took a step back, still facing the door, and then another until they were swallowed by the darkness outside. My heart was pounding in my chest, and I could barely breathe. I stood there, phone in hand, waiting to see if they would come back, but they didn't. The rain kept falling, 
the sound of it loud in my ears, but the figure was gone. I waited a few more minutes, then finally went back to my desk, unable to shake the feeling that something was very wrong. The next morning, I told the security guard about what had happened. He checked the cameras, but there was nothing there, no sign of anyone near the entrance at the time I said. I tried to tell myself it was just a trick of the light, maybe my tired eyes playing tricks on me. But even now, every time I work late, I find myself glancing toward the entrance, half expecting to see that figure standing there in the rain, watching I just wanted to get home. When the train finally arrived, I got on and noticed I was the only one in the car. That wasn't too unusual for this time of night, especially with the weather. So, I sat down near the door. The train doors closed with that familiar hiss, and the car jolted forward, moving into the dark tunnel. I leaned back, staring out at nothing, letting my mind wander. But then I noticed something. I wasn't alone. Across from me, in the next row of seats, was a person sitting there, staring right at me. I hadn't noticed them when I got on, it was as if they just appeared out of nowhere. They were sitting perfectly still, eyes locked on me, not blinking, not moving at all. A chill ran down my spine. I tried to shake it off, telling myself it was just another late night commuter but something was off. Their clothes were soaked, dripping water onto the floor, but they didn't seem to care. Their face was pale, and their eyes, those eyes, didn't blink, not once. I looked away, trying to focus on something else, anything else, but I could feel their stare burning into me. The sound of the train on the tracks seemed louder, the lights in the car flickering slightly. I glanced back, hoping they'd stopped staring, but they hadn't. They were still there, still staring, still unblinking. I started to get uncomfortable, shifting in my seat. The rain pounded against the windows, and the tunnel outside seemed to stretch on forever. I thought about changing cars, just getting up and moving, but something in me couldn't do it. It felt like if I moved, something bad would happen. So, I stayed put, trying to ignore the person sitting across from me, but it was impossible. They didn't move, didn't flinch, just sat there, staring. I couldn't even tell if they were breathing. The train lurched, and I gripped the edge of my seat. My heart was starting to race, and I could feel sweat forming on my forehead despite the cold air in the car. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I forced myself to look directly at them, hoping maybe they'd look away, break the tension, but they didn't. Their eyes were wide, unblinking, almost too wide. Their mouth was slightly open, like they were about to say something, but no sound came out. I cleared my throat, trying to steady my voice. Hey, are you okay? I asked, but they didn't respond. They just kept staring. The silence in the car was suffocating. I could hear my own breathing, fast and shallow, and the sound of the rain outside felt distant, like it wasn't even real. The train slowed down as we approached the next station. I thought about getting off, but it wasn't my stop, and I didn't want to be stranded in some random part of the city at this hour. The doors opened with a whoosh, and for a moment, I hoped someone else would get on, but no one did. The station was empty, just a faint echo of the rain outside. The doors closed, and the train started moving again. I was trapped in the car with them, and the feeling of dread was growing. I tried not to look, but my eyes kept drifting back to that pale face, those white eyes. They hadn't moved at all, not an inch. It was like they were a statue but I knew they weren't. I could feel their presence, cold and unnerving. Another station passed, and still, no one got on. The train felt like it was getting colder, and my hands were starting to shake. I couldn't stay in that car any longer. I had to move, had to get away from that stare. 
I stood up slowly, trying not to look at them, and started walking toward the next car. As I passed them, I felt their eyes follow me, even though their head didn't move. It was like they were watching me without turning their head, and it made my skin crawl. I hurried to the door at the end of the car, but when I reached it, the door wouldn't budge. It was locked. I tugged on it harder, but it wouldn't open. Panic started to rise in my chest. I turned around, and they were still sitting there, still staring. But now there was something different. Their mouth was open wider, like they were grinning, but it wasn't a normal grin. It was twisted, unnatural, like they were enjoying my fear. I backed away, feeling trapped. The train rattled through the tunnel, the lights flickering again. I pressed myself against the door, praying for the next station to come. My eyes were locked on them now, unable to look away, and that grin seemed to grow wider, more distorted. Finally, the train started to slow down again. The next station was coming up, and I felt a surge of relief. The doors would open, and I could get out of this nightmare. I didn't care where I ended up, I just needed to get off this train. The train came to a stop, and the doors opened. I didn't wait, I bolted out of the car, not looking back, my heart pounding in my chest. The station was empty, deserted, but I didn't care. I just needed to get away. I ran up the stairs, out into the rain, letting the cold water wash over me. It felt real grounding, like I had escaped something terrible. I didn't stop running until I was out on the street, away from the subway, away from that stair. I don't know what that person was or if they were even real, but I still see their face sometimes, in my dreams, in dark corners, in the reflections of windows. That twisted grin, those unblinking eyes, they're always watching, and I can't shake the feeling that one day, I'll see them again.